Hi everybody and welcome to session one. I am going to try to explain session one in five minutes or less and then I'm going to explain how you get around some possible technical problems that I think some of you may encounter as you work through this module. The technical problems have to do with your ability or inability to see certain pages that I've loaded into session one. Now I'm showing you, I'm sort of doing this introduction through Google Chrome and it's not giving me any problems but I did notice that Mozilla Firefox and Internet Explorer were having the same problem which is that they were not displaying content that I've put in the module that you need to be able to see. So at the end of this video presentation I will take some minutes to actually address what it is you need to do in case you encounter those issues. Okay. Okay, so to enter the module from the home page, you can click content. And then it gives you what it calls a table of contents. And then you can click on any of these links and it will open up the two panels that have the name of the content icon, the sort of name and link on the left, and the content itself displays over here. Uh, quickly, if you feel overwhelmed by what you see here, the first thing I recommend is that you shut all of these items. Okay. Um, quickly, also, when you're entering in a module, you'll find that I, I have, uh, I always start with an introduction section that has this video, this sort of walkthrough video, which I sometimes do as a computer screen walkthrough, like what I'm doing now, or sometimes I just do it as a talking head sort of YouTube video of myself. So I'm open, I've expanded the introduction section. So I have a welcome page with my welcome video and then I have a session checklist that's displayed through a wiki page. Now the wiki pages are the things I was talking about earlier that are having some issues in Mozilla Firefox and Internet Explorer, at least for me. I need to talk to the UWG online about it tomorrow. But the session checklist is displayed on uh, a wiki. and. Um, I've never had an issue with it displaying and students have never seemed to have issues either and I'm talking about from January through July I had 200 students using this in Corsten and not having an issue but I think an issue has come up between the summer and the fall alright so enough dwelling on that what you're gonna do in this in this section is you're going to work through the checklist given here and you'll notice that it corresponds directly with the items over on the left. Okay. Um, the main things you're going to do is read the syllabus. Okay. Read the course plan, which I think is in a way more valuable than the syllabus. So please, please look at that. It gives you the big picture view of the class. And, um, you can check out when I have some upcoming meetings that are scheduled. Those are optional and they are for teaching podcasting. You can give me your contact info through the Hewitt student contact form. I urge you to do that. You can use the course questions and answers board to uh, pose questions that I or your classmates can answer. Um, under orientation related tasks, so you would you know open this section up and find these links here that correspond to it. You can check out the About D2L course in page. It kind of gives you a link to UWG Online, but a more direct link would be right here, up here at the top. It's always there saying hello, wanting you to visit it. If you don't know how to use anything in Corsten, you need to go check out the tutorials that are provided. So each tool, like if you don't know how to make a discussion post, you can go to UWG Online. Um, hmm, what do we do from here? Uh, you go to students and faculty and click students and then scroll down a little bit and all of the tools are here like discussion board, how to do an email, how to submit the Dropbox, how to take a quiz, all that stuff. Okay, So make sure you you do that. Uh, okay, so I, I just have a redundant page here that kind of helps you with some stuff but uh, if you decide based on your syllabus reading that you want to buy a webcam these are just some tips here. They're not the best and you can do your own internet research and learn more about it but a webcam is not required it is simply a useful tool for this class. If you don't have other tools like a decent smartphone, for example, might serve all of the purposes that you need. Um, a good microphone, USB microphone that hooks into your computer might serve the purposes. 
So that's just there for your information. Session one discussion, um, introduce yourself uh, to, to your classmates and respond to two of them at a minimum by the end of the session. The first post is due by the second Thursday of the module. There's two Thursdays in the module, so it's due the second Thursday. The final two posts are due by the very end of the module, the Sunday night. Um, you want to do the assignment, your D2L profile. Uh, that allows us to click class list and look at you and uh, or some icon that represents you and read about you and get to know you better kind of in a quick snapshotty kind of way which um, is what we do now in our in the 21st century we like to have profiles so um, get your profile up to date please uh, teacher welcome video this is an actual assignment okay all the stuff up above has been sort of like getting oriented getting set up getting ready to go this is actually kind of just one thing you're doing to kind of get your feet wet a little bit. And I want you to read the instructions and then submit a Word document to the Dropbox. So what is this? This, in, in my own words, and do read the instructions because they're more in depth. Um, in the past, we've written letters to welcome students into our classroom. But we now have new ways of communicating with our students. And whether you're going to teach face-to-face -face in a traditional way, you're going to work with clients in a face-to-face -face setting, or you're going to be in a computer-mediated or completely online setting, I want you to push yourself to deliver your teacher welcome in a new medium. Okay? So instead of writing a teacher welcome letter, we're going to look at a traditional teacher welcome letter, we break it down, and what you do is you take this template that I provide and you kind of draft, you just quickly draft your own teacher welcome video. And if you're not a, if you don't look, think of yourself as a teacher, but you think of yourself as a speech language pathologist, then it is your speech language pathologist SLP welcome letter. Because you also have clients that you're working with, and certainly if you're school based, you do that, you know, during the school year. So, in a school setting. So, um, check that out. I think it's kind of fun. Um, students seem to be enjoying this assignment. It's kind of new. It's I first started uh, having having you guys do this starting in spring, but I think it's good to just sort of think about doing some of these things that we do in different ways because this this can have applications in a traditional face-to-face -face class. This could be useful in a traditional face-to-face -face class. And I love it when my daughter's teacher sends her weekly email just telling us what she's what they're doing in her class. She doesn't do a video, but she does an email and just that communication is so so great. You know, papers get smushed up in my daughter's backpack and lost and all that kind of thing. This is something that I can I can access. Alright, so enough rambling. I don't want to ramble because it'll take forever. Alright, so you'll see in the first few modules of the course, or the first few sessions, I should stick to the right language, a section called Hello Standards. Through this, I want you to become slightly familiar with the standards that oversee what we do with you both in teacher education broadly in your, your program here at the University of West Georgia and also in this class. So in this first Hello Standards issue, whatever you want to call it, there's two sets of standards I want you to just glance at and kind of skim through, just be m moderately familiar with them. I find reading standards to be very painful. It's like I have to read them out loud just to get through it, honestly. Uh, but they are important, you know, very smart people, I think, and organizations, uh, just huge consortia of people and groups get together, people that are qualified to do this, I believe, the most qualified in our field, and they create standards that that tell us what um, a, a new teacher should know and be able to do and what, what disposition they should have. That's what the end task is sort of about. CAPE standards are brand new, but they're based on um, NCATE and the other, a TIAC, so they're based on, it's a comp combining of some previous standards that ruled or governed teacher education. CAPE is how we are accredited at the University of West Georgia. And so we have, we have to mind both of these closely. They're both very important. And the problem is there's so many standards that it's like figuring out how to make sense of them and how to prioritize them and how to align them and how to behave based on them because you have all, all these different ones. 
melding them together can be a challenge. So I don't expect you to do any fancy melding in this class. I just want you to be familiar with them. And this does tie to something in this class. It's not just some random whim of mine. At the end of the class, you are going to do some assignments. You'll do one or, one or more assignments that become your key assessment that you upload into TK20. And I think it's important that you understand why this key assessment is what it is. I think it's important that you understand that there that I looked at in-task standards, I looked at CAPE, and I looked at this, the uh, other standards that you will be just barely introduced to uh, throughout the rest of the class in a, in a few other modules and a few other sessions so that you understand why this key assessment is appropriate. Okay? And so I think it's important that you become a little familiar. And so there's there's going to be a super little short quiz that basically basically all you're saying in that quiz is yes, I know where to find those standards and I'm planning to skim them because I am an educator in this field and I need to know about the standards that govern how I'm taught and govern or that make recommendations for the way I should perform. Okay? And that's I think it's safe for you to say that that you you know where to find the standards and that you intend to someday skim read them okay and that way I know okay you you're you're just barely aware and that that's I think that's important I know you probably think it's kind of uh, strange but it is it is a little bit important that you know where these standards come from and then in the next session the standards that uh, you're gonna look at are the national educational technology standards and they're a little more applicable to what we do in this class in task is pretty good too for giving some guidance on teachers but anyway enough about that enough I talk too much. All right, Voices from the Field is uh, simply a video, one or more videos each week that I just throw into the module. I hope you'll watch them li or listen. Some of them are podcasts. If in the future when we do our digital movie assignment you want to interview somebody that's in the field, they, I mean they can be at any part of the educational enterprise. I mean they can be at the Department of Education. They can be at an after-school program. Um, P, you know, ideally be somebody that uses technology, not somebody that doesn't use technology or that's against it. Because we want to. I mean, there's plenty of conversations. I think about how hard it is to use technology and how we don't have enough money, and there's this digital divide. There's multiple digital divides and things like that. There's lots of realistic but negative voices that we could listen to. And so for this assignment, I want you to, if you if you choose to do this for your digital movie, which I'm getting ahead of myself again because it's almost midnight when I make this video, but if you choose to do it, I want you to try to find someone that is sort of open to the idea of technology. You know, not always certain that it's the best idea um, to use it, and it's it never is the best. It's it is simply a tool that you can use to enhance your instruction from time to time, and it could be on a daily basis if you have good access. It could be a few times a week, that kind of thing. It all depends on the context that you're in. But um, I would want you to find somebody that's sort of open to technology. All right, so that is the module. Um, it's quite brief. It it has a lot of stuff in it, but it's really a lot briefer than you think. Now. One of the most important documents that I, I told you earlier, the syllabus is important, I think. The course plan may be the, the most important document, at least for me, because it tells us what we're doing when. It's a bird's eye view of what we're doing when. So like session one is a two week session, and it goes from Monday, August 26th to Sunday, September 8th. These are the things we do during this session. This is when these things are due, it's sort of the top level deadline for the whole module. Uh, I say that with some care in that the discussion, uh, the first post is due a little bit before this deadline. Okay, so please look at this course plan. Look at the assignments we're doing this semester. Don't work past session four at this point, okay, because sessions five and onward need a little tweaking, okay? But you could work a few sessions ahead. Watch this video, why the course plan is so important and how to use it. All right, so let me talk quickly because I'm really running over time again, which I just do, at least in the first module. Um, how, what if you can't see this stuff I'm showing you in this video? What if you come to this, this, um, 
session in this content module and you can't see stuff. Well, first of all, the course plan is the most important thing, like I told you. How the heck do you get to it? Well, it's located on the K-12 Textures Wiki. This is actually a website that's being piped into D2L. And um, the way you get to it, I'll go ahead and right-click this and open the link in a new tab and just show you. The wiki is called k12textures.wiki.westguy.edu. That's k12techstersdotwiki.westguy.edu. And this is the home page of it. You can ignore the home page. Go to this navigation bar over here. You you want the course plan for MEDT 341. You can click that and that gets you to this this thing. And then from here you actually have links, you have access to instructions that are uh, related to various modules. So like you've got the D2L profile instructions and the teacher welcome video plan instructions right here. And you don't have D2L blocking you because you're looking at it outside of D2L. In the orientation module I also have you looking at, a, at various other things such as the About D2L course in page, about selecting a webcam, the class meetings, the upcoming class meetings page. So these are a couple other pages that, that you look at in the um, in the D2L module. Okay, so this is one workaround. If you are if this wiki is being blocked, you can go straight to it. K12 textures.wiki.west.edu. Now there's something else. There's another tool that maybe even more awesome and the, what I just showed you is just a simple little workaround but it may not comfort you you may still be um, unsure am I doing what I'm supposed to so what I did was I investigated and used the checklist feature in D2L now don't get this confused with this this session checklist is a checklist that I typed up by hand and dumped on a wiki page and it's inside of Corsten this checklist is a replica. It says the same things as this one. So this, I'm going to show you what it is, but it's it's actually kind of a neat tool that I need to be using in D2L, so the technical problem actually forced me to use this. Let's click on it and take a look. All right, so, and, and then as the semester goes on, we should see more checklists pop up. I'm going to try to put everything, all of the sessions, I'm going to try to create one of these interactive checklists. All right, so you can click the session one checklist. <coughs> Excuse me. And perhaps you noticed a moment ago, it says items complete two out of 17. And that's because I clicked the first two items. So the cool thing about this checklist feature, this again, this checklist is identical to the one that's in the module with, with a few exceptions. You can actually click things as you finish them and then you hit save. Okay, then it saves those check marks and lets you know that you've done them. But in addition, if you have any trouble opening up pages that I have put into the module, those pages that are having that seem to be provide, making trouble have been linked here in this checklist. You should be able to just left click it and it should open. But if that doesn't happen, you can copy, you can highlight copy paste and that will be your your workaround in the short term until either it gets fixed um, or it doesn't and if it doesn't then I have to to come up with a workaround which does not involve wikis I guess but that will take more time for me to fix the problem if I actually have to change all my wiki stuff um, but but this workaround this this will work. And if you need me to add more links, if certain other links don't show up, you let me know, and we will get it posted. All right. So that is a 20-minute welcome video to session one. I'm glad to have you in the class. And uh, let me know uh, if you have any questions. This first session usually goes pretty smoothly. We're just kind of getting underway, um, and the semester will really start to get busy in session two and session three and it will just be a whirlwind with uh, you know Thanksgiving and our new TK20 assessment. Anyway I'm rambling I'm going to stop this video. Welcome to MEDT 3401 you guys.